today I'm going to be taking one of these common Bic pens and turning it into a customized steel pen. Um, I, this is just from a printer. You have a graveyard for these printers and lots of printer rods with it. And they've got a nice polished finish. Um, so I will be machining a casing, a new casing for this pen. They're really easy to disassemble. You can just pull the back off and once off, that's off you can pull the tip off. And this is what I will be using inside the steel pen casing. First I'm going to um, cut off um, the section that I'll be using for the casing. Um, face both ends, I'll be doing some drilling, and I think I'm gonna also add a flat spot on the mill. And when it's all finished there, I'm going to blue it. Um, I have a sample that I've been doing some testing with right here. Um, this is just a piece of mild steel. You can see there is a blue section and a gold section, and then just the plain polished steel finish. Um, and that is all done with heat. That's an oxide um, layer on the outside. And I can um, put many different colors onto the same surface and I can control where the colors go um, with just vinyl cutting and vinegar. So this whole tube is going to have to be hollowed out for the pen to be able to fit in here. And I don't have a drill long enough to go the whole way. Uh, so I'm gonna have to come in with two directions, which means I'll have a hole in the back. And they have the same thing on this type of pen, but they have a plastic cap here. Um, so I found this screw. This is just a 1032 and the minor diameter is really similar to the diameter here that we'll need to press fit the tip in. So I'll already have that diameter running through the whole thing. Um, I should be able to just screw this in the back. And because it has a hexagon, um, I think it's, it's a little more decorative than a Phillips or flathead. Um, I can polish this surface on the back and blew it um, along with the rest of um, the pen body. I'm gonna go ahead and take off the end. Now the other end. There we go. Now I can clean up the faces in this Harbor Freight lathe. That's cleaned and deburred now. Um, I'm go ahead and spin it around. And I'll go and face this off. I don't need to take all this material off um, because I'll be adding a taper onto this anyway, so I just need a clean reference circuit. So I'll be drilling the whole thing um, with this size 23 drill bit. It's just under 530 seconds, um, and it should get me a good press fit. Uh, first though, I'm gonna center drill on um, both ends, and I can proceed to going um, with this 23 drill. Now the other side. The reason I'm using a 23 drill bit, um, you can see it's right here. It's only um, about two thousandths smaller than the 530 seconds. Um, I just so happen to have one. I don't have a complete numbered and lettered set. But I had this one, and so the reason why I'm using it instead of the three or the instead of the 5:30 seconds, uh, because the 5:30 seconds bit um, just barely it won't fit um, inside um, this collar here, and the size 23 will. Normally, the shank of a drill bit is actually slightly undersized to what um, the tip will drill. Um, so, because there's a slight amount of clearance heel here. Um, this will drill bigger and any clearance that might, any slop that might be here will probably um, go away. So it'll be almost a perfect size um, for, for this to fit into. If the fit ends up being a little bit tight, I can always just go back and drill with the 530 seconds to finish it. It's gonna be a long drilling operation. Um, so I'll be doing pecking. I'm going in a little bit, coming out to clear the chips, um, and then going in from the other side to do the same.
so I ran out of travel. Um, here are my tailstocks. What I have to do to finish up um, this end is I have to push it in a little bit. Right now it's as far back as I can get it um, without ejecting the paper. So I'm just pushing it in. Um, I won't be able to bring the tip out um, anymore. So I'll have to go a little bit slower. Um, but now uh, my travel should go all the way up until I run out of fleet. Looks like on this side, I just barely made it to the halfway point. Um, so when I flip it over, I might need to go a little bit past the flutes, um, but I think that'll be okay because I'm gonna go actually, I'm gonna go in with an eighth inch drill first for a few reasons. Um, one, um, because if this um, size 23 bit is only taking off um, a little bit, there won't be quite as many chips being generated, which means I won't have to back out the drill to clear the chips quite as often. Um, and also with a pilot drill, the, um, the tip, which actually doesn't do any cutting on a drill, um, won't have to be rubbing away material. Um, whenever the tip is pushing through material, it causes a lot more force on the tip of the drill bit, which can cause deflection. And that'll make the hole bigger than, I, than it should be. On the back side, it didn't matter, but the front side, where we're trying to get the press fit, it's a little more important. So. I'm going to go in with the eighth inch so that there's less tool pressure. It should go in and make a uh, more accurate hole. And also, if there's less chips being produced, I should be able to push this in farther, um, no problem, um, even past the drill um, the, the drill flutes. So I decided to go the 9 64ths. It's um, halfway between eighth inch um, and my size 23 drill. Um, I just was trying to minimize the amount of material that, um, that my finishing drill will have to do. Um, for all the reasons I mentioned before. So I finished piloting um, and finishing the size with a size 23, and it's a bit tight. So I am gonna move up to the 530 seconds and redrill the whole thing. It should only take a few seconds and check it again. And now we'll check it again. Still a bit tight. Um, I'll see if I have a larger drill. So my next largest drill bit is about a 64th larger, um, which I think will be too much. So instead, I'm just going to take a little bit of material off the plastic. There's a few bumps here that I feel um, that I could take down just a little bit to get the press fit. Now I'm going to put a countersink in the back end um, for this cap. I accidentally um, did a 90 degree countersink. Um, but it should be 82, so this one's 82, I'll redo the countersink. This is a 1032 tap, which should um, be perfect for this 1032 screw. It'll work as the cap. This countersink makes it really easy to start the threads in this. Um, I'll probably go about halfway up on the tap, and it should be good enough. It's important to back up your tap um, every once in a while to clear the chips out. Um, since this is a straight flute tap. When I'm backing out the tap, um, it can take a lot of wrist work, uh, but I can also put the lathe in reverse and slowly bring it out. You just have to make sure it's going the right direction, um, otherwise you might jam the tap in further and snap it. I shortened the screw and added a little chamfer, and now it fits nicely into the back. Um, it'll need some polishing later, but for now I'll turn my attention to the tip of the pen. So I decided to make the pen shorter um, for a few reasons. Um, one, because it's easier to drill a shorter pen, and two, um, is just more stylistic. But now we can fit this in, um, in here, and I can pick up this angle and match it onto the steel. I pulled my compound rest um, all the way out, 
which reveals these screws here. Um, and by loosening them, now the whole thing can rotate. Um, you can do a lot of math to determine the taper. Um, oops. To, to determine the taper of this to match it. But I'm just going to bring this back um, and I can just look at this uh, manually and match where I think I want it. Um, and I'll get the uh, similar taper on the steel. squared my compound rest and I have this um, 60 degree thread cutting tool um, just about lined up um, at the edge um, of this taper. I'm zeroed out right here and I'm going to be adding grooves um, along from about this line over to this one. Um, these are um, sort of going to be in place of like a grip um, where the grip would be on a pen or a pencil. Um, I'm just going to put little grooves um, occasionally in this area. Um, for the tool. went ahead and finished up all of the polishing, even including the back end, um, the whole thing. I think it looks great and it'll make a great gift.